So we just came back from the store and we have lumber for actually two different projects. But the foreigners start coming into play now in, in the homestead, right? Yep. This is the first time we really used it to transfer a lot of material and, and it did great. And you might ask we're not using the uh, tra trailer, right? We are not quite finished with it yet. We are almost there. Maybe next week we'll be using the trailer. Hello friends and welcome to the homestead. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good day, wherever you are in the world, what time of the day you are watching us. If this is the first time you are visiting with us, we want to extend to you a very, very warm welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. We appreciate you returning. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very, very, very happy birthday. So today we are going to transform these four boards into a nice organizational um, do you hear it? Unit. Shelving unit for the bathroom. So stick around. As always, we're going to show you every step of the way, along with tips and tricks on how to achieve it yourself. So today we're going to show you how to build this beautiful organizational system for your bathroom that is totally customized to your space, solid wood, and will cost you under $30. There are many available for sale, but they're $130, $140, $170 and up. So this is not only going to save you money, but will be made exactly for your space and you will not have to waste any of your material or any of your money building something or buying something that may or may not fit your, your needs. As always, stick around, we're going to show you how to build this. This is not the best uh, wood material available. It costs us around $30, but it's not the worst either. So you can definitely build that for under $30. And for some of you, that might be a project you can build just using scraps that you have already in your shop. It is a very simple build with only straight cuts and you can easily achieve it in a couple of hours. As always, stick around and we're going to show you everything that you need to know. So here we are at our miter station. And after you make sure that everything is as it should be, everything is flat, you're going to measure it. You're going to measure it. This is really a rare occasion for us, right? We actually need to measure because we need a specific height Right. So we make our mark and we align our uh, blade with our mark and we're ready to make our first cut. Now we know we need two pieces of this dimension, so we're going to cut another piece like we always do. We're going to use our first piece as the story stick, right? Virtually every cut for this product is made using the chop saw except when we use the flash saw to cut dowels. So this is a very, very straightforward project that pretty much everyone can achieve with very, very minimal equipment. A jigsaw can also be used for this project. And this is our total height. Okay. All right. Uh, so we're going to cut the two boards at the same uh, length right now because we found one of our boards had a little imperfection that would not make it straight on the floor. As you can clearly see here, this is not a straight cut and that was the factory cut of the board. Again, it is faster and easier and make, uh, it makes it more... Uh, <clears throat> I don't want to say that it makes it more likely that the two boards would be exactly the same if we cut them in the same time. At the same time. Consistency. Yeah, consistency. And that's how the cookie crumbles. Pretty much done. Can you see me? Of course. You cannot. I cannot see you. Hi. Is this part of the outtake? That's not an outtake. That's a brilliant B-roll. Oh, outtake. Okay. Outtake. I cannot see you, so you cannot see me. That's how it works. The dogs Who took the dogs out? That's not the song. All right, so we need to stop fooling around and cut something, right? Cut something, uh huh. Other... Preferably the boards that we bought. Yes. So in our case, we have taken dimensions because our uh, 
specific space is kind of complicated, right? We need to make sure that it fits correctly. So I could give you dimensions, but that would be for our space. You really need to figure out dimensions on, on your own space, right? All right, I will hold and you guys can put the magic clamps on. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's a little bit of creative usage of our clamps, our favorite clamps, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they are going to help us hold this together. We are going to attach it. We're not going to dry feed this because it's too big. We don't have a surface to dry feed it, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to be assembling it as we're going along which is not the typical way we're doing things, but really, we don't have a way to do that. And for this, how are we assembling it? What do you mean? Are we using screws? Are we yes, using, screws. Are we doing? Just okay. screws. So it'll just be straight screws here? Yep. Here? Correct. Okay. For now, and then as we go down... And the intention is for this to be painted because it matches the rest of the decor. Right? Correct. It will be painted white. Right. So the screws will disappear with the paint. Correct. Okay. Okay. I think that's fine there. All right. So we're going to use dowels for this, for the top, because we want it to look a little more. More better. <laughs> a little more better. A little more funner. So you wanted to use, I assume, glue, right? Okay. Well, yes, glue is always a good thing. And we're using dowels. Atlas. Yeah, when you use dowels, I mean, we're, we're going to use them uh, in length here. So I thought we put it on the dowel, not on the hole. Very thick glue, so holding well on there. Top, as you can hear the sound, right? You can hear the, the change in pitch. Um, we use the camera to tap that in, and as soon as you hear the change, you know it's fully heated. And so we'll do that on the uh, other hole here, and then we'll do the other side the same way. The structure the same way. And we'll come back with the next. This is the last dowel we put in place. We are cleaning up the glue, and now using this Japanese saw to cut flush. And as you can see, it does really well. And you could do the same through all the connections on this piece. It can be all dowels, or you can switch to screws at some point. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's totally up to what you want to do. This is just to add a little bit of visual interest right. to the project, right? Because we decided we're not going to do paint it white. Between our last clip and this clip, we changed our minds. So, yeah. We did. We did. Because we didn't get aligned before we started the project together. All right, let's move on. There we go. So because we have, um, you know, they're not exactly rough boards. They are supposed to be finished boards, but sometimes they have a little bit of a twist to them. We want to make sure because we only have clamps up on top here and not on the bottom that we're going to be nice and square on both corners. So we're using a one, two, three block to put inside there to make sure that we don't have any dips or twists 
I'm doing a couple of different dimensions to make sure that it's where it should be so that we don't have any gaps. Looks pretty good for the boards that we have, right? Okay. Okay. I'm doing the same thing on the other side. Again, just checking for that square so that when we uh, attach this shelf, that it will be nice and level, right? Once again, we decided to use dowels to hold this uh, shelf up. So we're going to make the holes like we did before. You can use screws here if you don't want to use dowels. Using screws will make this project go much faster, but dowels will make the, the piece a little more rustic and a little more reminiscent of an older time. It is your choice, you can do it either way. So we are uh, attaching the bottom self first and we have raised it a little bit using one of the other selves so if there is water or something on the bottom it will not be absorbed by a large surface but only by the feet right does that make sense mm -hmm. and uh, mrs diy decided she wants to use dowels in all of them so that's what we're doing but you can very easily use screws for this process right so because we do not actually have an assembly table we have to do that on the floor which already has provided a little bit of a a challenge but you have to be creative again this is a bigger piece than we can assemble safely on uh, the right level so we have to do it all on the floor and as you can see Peter there is holding pressure on it and Mrs. DIY will make the the holes for the, the dowels so the process is similar here the only thing we're doing is that we're going sideways because of course we do not we cannot go straight not sideways it's at an angle at an angle yes correct The rest of the process is the same. We just put the dowel in and we glue a little bit and we continue that way. As you can see, you heard it again topping out and you see that the dowel is here at an angle, right? And again, we're going to wipe the glue a little bit and then we're going to use a, a flash cut saw and clean it. So it will look nice and flush. And these saws are not super expensive, um, but they are very nice if you are interested in getting them. Include them just small spaces. Yeah. So. But they're very handy. Okay. So here we are. The basic form is present. We need to add a couple of shelves, right? Mm -hmm. on, on the towers and the, of course, the toilet will be in between here, right? Also here to have some space so that you can still lift the lid of the toilet tank, correct? Yeah. Right. Okay. So we're going to, to continue on, or put the shelves and then finish it. And again, we've used dowels on all the connections so far, so there's no actual metal hardware, right? Right. You can see here a very nice fit. This was our first test fit in, in our space, but you can see it is exactly what, how we expected it. It makes all this space that was otherwise unusable to a very useful space and it makes it look much better. It still allows us to move the top of the toilet so we can service it and we easily have access to the controls of the toilet so we can utilize both its flash functions. Of course it's easy to remove if you ever need to, it's not attached to anything, but it definitely makes this space that was before really not used for anything a much more usable space. You cannot buy something from the store to do that specifically for this space because it's so specific. You can see your hand easily fits underneath so you can uh, flush the toilet. So we're done with one of the two towers. We have made the shelves and everything. And now we are going to work on the other tower. And as always, we're using story sticks, right? And as you can see, we have a story stick there. So that will ensure that because you're going to always be looking at this, this orientation, right? It makes sure that the shelves are the same height in both towers right mm -hmm. 
And then we have another story stick for the second part. Right. right. After the, the other one. Right. So story sticks are great. And again, you don't need to measure anything, right? It is a, it kind of set setting, if you wish. So I didn't forget it? So I didn't forget it. Run Comatic. You could probably sue us for copyright infringement, right? And why are you using clamps, Mrs. DIY? Clamps just to kind of make sure that we have a tight um, joint here between the two boards, and it also helps hold everything in place because we we're not octopi; we don't have eight arms. And if there is a negative to dowels, is that they do not put pressure like a compression pressure, like a screw would, right? Whatever compression is between the boards is there, and you can see we are very good. Our our bubble is in the middle. We're taking everything and then we're going to drill for our dowels and and then we'll be finished. So with the piece finished, the next step is a little bit of sanding, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a very big fan of sanding, but Mrs. DIY is. I think sanding is okay for fine furniture, but for daily use furniture that have a rustic old style look, I really prefer not to sand them. And I really prefer not to make them very, very smooth either. It reminds me of my childhood when I was growing up in a farm. And most everything is rough and most everything was utilitarian. I like this style of furniture and I don't care for sanding. But Mrs. Wizard, Mrs. DIY insists on sanding. And of course that's her prerogative to do so. It is totally your choice. Sand or don't sand. It really makes no difference. Well, one of the advantages of having dowels versus uh, having screws is that as you can see there, we made a small mistake. The the dowel uh, hole came all out, right? Because we're in an angle and we didn't notice it. And this is before sanding. We just uh, use the flash cut saw and cut it. And when we sand it, it will be completely gone because it is wood in there, right? It's not a piece, a piece of screw. Mm -hmm. So they will virtually disappear. We'll show it to you after sanding. So here it is after sanding, as you can see, if the dowel was a little more similar color than the piece, it would not be visible at all, right? I mean, it's very, almost impossible. And it's very smooth, like there is nothing that you can feel. So if you were to paint this, it will disappear. But even with the stain, and it's going to be the underside of a shelf, I don't think it's going to... Right, but I mean, even if it was on the side, it, it's yeah. much better to make a mistake with the dowel than using a screw or a bolt, mm -hmm. right? Because those are not as easy to conceal. But you can see here, you saw it before. Mm -hmm. I mean, empty look pretty ugly, right? But it still does its job, it's, it's holding the self as it was supposed to do, and it is just disappeared. And here we are in our bathroom. As you can see, uh, before we put the furniture in, this was a totally unutilized space. There is not much you can do with this space. It's just there. Uh, it doesn't really do anything at all. And it is very hard to utilize it. So we decided to build the furniture you just saw in the, pre in the episode because we like both the utility and the improvement in the look of the space that we're going to put, put it. So let us show you how it looks now. You can immediately see the improvement. Even when it is empty, it makes the space look much better. It makes the space look more finished. And you immediately can see the utility, how easily you take the space and can, can add things to it. Bathroom necessities are now very well organized, very easy to reach. And also they look good, as you can see here clearly. All the necessities are there present. And uh, we think this is going to make a very great addition to our uh, bathroom. And also it makes the space look better and more finished. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. Well, friends, this is our finished project. As you can see, it looks very nice. It is straight. Everything is parallel to each other. It is a very well executed project. And using the dowels, while well, added a little bit of time, adds a little character to the piece as well. So you can use screws here. In our situation, really the dowels were not needed because anywhere else but the top, screws will not be visible. They are very close to the wall. There is absolutely no way for anyone to see them. But in any case, those are the choices we made. We could not decide how to finish it. So we are leaving it unfinished for now until Mrs. DIY decides how she wants it finished. To be frank, I like it unfinished. I prefer a lot of wood projects unfinished. I like the look of the wood and I like to see the wood as it ages and changes color a little bit. However, because this is not going to be attached in anything, it will be extremely easy 
to just move it and take it off again and finish it, either staining it the same way as our barn door or finishing it white as most of the bathroom is or even finish it blue like one of the cells that we have in the bathroom. In any case, finishing it is an option that does not have to be immediate. That's another advantage of when you build something yourself. You can put it into use like we plan to do without necessarily finishing everything at the same time. We we'll take a little bit of time, see what we think is going to first, uh, best fit our decor and then we are going to again finish it while we utilize the item and while we, we have the benefit of not having to wait or making a mistake and changing our mind and deciding we're not happy. The utility is there immediately and the finish will come when we decided exactly how, to, how we want to finish it. Right now the direction we're leaning is of course to stain it, similar to our barn door, but we might end up painting it white or painting in any other color. Well, we do hope that you'd enjoy this uh, short video and if you did, we appreciate if you came back and visit us again and also let us be know below what you might want to see in future episodes of our channel. From Professor DIY, Elpida and uh, Mrs. DIY, we're going to see you soon. You know the drill, if you found value to this, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe, let us know what else you might want to watch. We hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as we enjoy making it. I want to say farewell and we'll see you again soon.